now and it makes it very difficult and although we are only looking at from a marketer's point of view or, or, um, or from a from a potential marketer's point of view um jessica and jessica kayleen scott okay everybody's awake early in the morning this is surprising just mute yourself i don't want to listen to your private conversations please thank you Okay, Jessica, thank you very much. No, I don't want to do that. Right, so um, let's um, let's get the ball rolling. Um, for those who joined us from Centurion, um, I am quickly just going to share um, the screen with a an example of um, of your assignment. Come on, move away. Um, can everybody see the assignment there? Uh, I just want to make sh sure again that you know um, and and that it's um, like we said last week. It's a three part assignment now. It's eighty marks, so not one hundred and twenty. And your submission dates is not this week, but it's next week. Okay. There were a few questions, and I said uh, to the students before we went online in class here in, in, in Belleville that um, uh, it is important, and I have had some reply um, um, or emails from students requesting clarity about certain questions. Um, none of the work that none of the work that none of the work that we've completed thus far is of such a nature that it should worry you the two things i think that's important is that you have to realize that you are second year students now and a lot of the work that you're going to be expected to do in four assignments and also um in tests and exams um is going to relate to your um, application skills it's not first year where i'm going to draft an assignment that you can just grab your textbook and get all the information there. Otherwise, I mean, why would I include a section like reference lists? Otherwise, we can just say, well, we'll go, uh, the, the only reference is your class textbook. It's not. So we want you to do, we want to know your take, your opinion on a specific subject or concept. We know what it, we know what the concept is about. It's in the textbook. Okay, we've, we've dealt with that. Okay, so what do you, how do you see it? How do you interpret it? Okay, so that's the one thing. And the other is about the, the layout um, and the design of the poster. Students, you are not arts and design students. That's why the nature of the assignment is not going to evaluate and assist you on your designing skills. What is the infographic? The infographic is a document. It's just it's just a visual document to provide you with information about a particular process or concept. How you do it, um, you know what? We're just giving you guidelines. Um, at the end of the day, I know that on Canva there is um, a couple of uh, there's a number of different layouts and examples and templates that can be used. But at the end of the day, I'm not going to evaluate you on, on, on your design itself. There's no section in the assignment. If we scroll all the way down to the bottom, there's no section on, 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 um, on, on your designing skills. It's, it's about the content. Yes, there's a question. Yeah, I'll repeat it if nobody has it. Thank you very much. See, I get so involved in a conversation that I forget about delirium and Run, it's definitely going to rain in the Cape. That thanks for joining us. And Janice. Right, so 
people don't be too concerned about your artistic uh, those people who just joined that please can you uh, mute yourself i don't want to hear your private conversation might i do the call in the elbow you can chat to each other you can chat to each other between classes <laughs> Hello, Anybody have an idea how to mute yourself? It's right in the bottom left corner. It's a little microphone. If it's red and it's got a, um, it's got a um, vertical line, yeah, sort of running through it, it means you're muted. Um, to continue while, um, where I left off, the design itself and the artwork itself is it's your personal it's your personal stamp on the on the assignment. It's going to be different. There is no one single correct answer in the memo. There are certain information that needs to be in the in your response in your reply. Okay, that relates to the question that was that was presented, but. Please, people, don't read too much into the actual design itself, uh, and, the, and and specifically the artwork of, of the. Um, it's 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 not that important to me. Remember, however, from marketing one, to apply the Ada concept. Though. If you want something to um, to to, uh, what's the intention of something like this? Why would would you rather read a five-page article on the internet? Or would you rather go to an image on that displays an infographic on the same subject? We learn much better visually if we see it, and that's the intention of this particular of this particular task: to ensure that you include the information that we want, um, that we include the information that we want. Hello, thank you very much. Okay, somebody swap Monday and Tuesday around. Okay, everybody still with me? Can you still hear me? Yeah. Now it's a good time to unmute you. Yes, sir. Ah, thank you very much. We've got uh, we've got somebody that's alive and kicking. Um, the rest of you are probably still having breakfast and making coffee, but regardless, um, people, anything on the assignment, drop me a mail. Um, you can either do it on on on. Um, you can either do it directly to me, or you can go via Canvas with the inbox. There's also a possibility that we communicate in that in that in that fashion. It's it's up to you. However, um, what I do want to share with you is um, where we left off last week uh, which was that that was chapter I'm going to do that later during the course of the day as I go through um, I read through my slides um, evening before before every session um, I make some changes I update some things um, if I do that I will immediately update it on, on, on canvas as well so you have to update it version um, what I want to um, my goodness me. Um, what I want to do, however, is um, I want to still change the fact that, um, as it says there, it still shows, it still shows um, topic seven, chapter four. It was done in a specific order last year, and it wasn't always done chronologi chronologically according to the chapter numbers in the textbook. We did chapter one first, and then we did chapter seven, and then we did nine, and then we did four. So for this year, we've swapped it around, and it's done chronologically. So chapter one, chapter four, chapter five, in the respective order in which we will, um, um, we will go through this model. Um, and therefore, to avoid confusion, I am updating um, the slides. Uh, I've already removed topic seven from this one on, on my usual PowerPoint, but I've not updated the one on Canvas. That's done on a daily basis. I'll do it when I upload the video this afternoon. But we progressed through this chapter up to that point. And um, as I was saying to the students here in Belleville, it was actually quite um, ironic that yesterday on International Women's Day, 
um, the very um, much talked about interview that Oprah had with Harry and Meghan um, was was also screened. Um, if any of you watched it um, during the course of the day, we'll we'll obviously give you an opportunity to share your impressions on that. Uh, and the reason why is because it's relevant to the subject that we are currently addressing, and that's culture and subculture because it was quite evident from those who did see the interview that there are some serious issues, um, cultural issues, um, as well as racism and sexism issues um, that not a, a lot of us are aware of. And I'm actually quite, um, I quite like the, um, the analogy that you used about the old um, fairy tale of the little mermaid that um, actually fell in love, the prince fell in love with Little Mermaid's voice because he, she sang very beautifully. And then for her to become a human and actually marry her prince, um, she had to lose her voice. Um, and Megan sort of used that analogy because uh, she felt that that's exactly what happened to her as well, up to the point that she actually came out um, and, and, and spoke to, spoke publicly through, um, through Oprah on, on the issues that she's had. Um, so anyway, um, a lot of people have um, very strong opinions about that and say, you know what, it was your choice. You knew what you were going to get into. Um, but those who haven't um, haven't seen the, the interview, um, you'll have a different opinion on that. It's not that straightforward. I think the I think the I think the essence of um, among very specific and contentious subjects um, covered in the in the interview was to me that you only know what you know. And I think that's very relevant from a marketer's point of view towards understanding the customer. The customer only knows what you tell him. And there's a very interesting quote that um, a popular quote by um, by Bill, uh, well, Bill Gates by um, uh, Steve Jobs, where he says that um, don't ask the customer what he wants, because by the time that you've given him what he wants, he's decided to do, he wants something else. Okay, so um, <laughs> I suppose that that's simplifying it, but to a certain extent, it is true. However, um, we are in business. Businesses, organizations are in business to make a profit, but it's done in such a manner that they keep their customers, retain the customers and convert them to become loyal towards a brand or a product or a organization. So in a culture which we have concluded in, in, in our brief session last week that we spent on chapter four was you can almost say it's the personality of society because it basically combines all the beliefs and customs and values of all the people living in a particular um, environment. And there are different um, different criteria that's used to, to um, identify and categorize culture, but um, it, it, it makes it a bit easier for, for marketers if they can use culture and they quite effectively use culture as one of the criteria to, to um, to segment the market so they can focus their efforts on a particular culture because usually people who have the same values uh, and the same beliefs um, are also going to express the same kind of behavioral patterns when they make the decisions as, as consumers as to where to buy, what service to, to use or what product to buy. Um, it definitely gives structure and order um, to or culture. Um, definitely gives structure and order to the decision making process. It's not casting stone because we're still working with unique individuals who are completely different. Uh, we have different personality traits and the same person is not even going to be in a good mood every day, even if his character is of such a nature that they are very much um, sort of a ray of sunshine. Uh, we also have bad days. All of us have bad days uh, and, and therefore it, it, it can impact on on our mood for a particular day doesn't mean that all of a sudden our beliefs and our values are going to change and as a result of that we're going to um, change our, um, um, our, our our customs and our behavior but um it is important and if i and it's probably not at the moment the best image or images that i could have selected um 
because neither of those two football managers, uh, not, neither of their teams are doing very well at the moment. Um, and um, that was not the reason why I chose this particular or these particular um, images. Um, but because culture is, is very much considered as what is suitable behavior in a particular um, situation. I mean, uh, would you go to church in your um, topless and in your swimming trunks and flip flops? 50 years ago, they would have, they would have, I mean, sorry. You would have, maybe in Hawaii. Maybe in Hawaii, yes. And that's my point because <laughs> very often, very often our environment, our geographical area, um, um, puts a different spin on, 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 on what has been traditionally acceptable behavior or acceptable dress in a particular, um, uh, in a particular situation. It's different. I mean, if you look at the two images, uh, there's no specific dress code for a football manager they can wear what they want but these two individuals um have become known for in uh, jose marino's case for being very formal and very snappy he's almost always in a suit or um a more formal sort of appearance where um, um liverpool manager Jurgen top is, is is slightly different he occasionally wears a suit but i i don't think i think he probably wore it at his mother's um, funeral recently she died of COVID 19 years and um, and he couldn't go to the funeral um as as um because of the restrictions um and also just at his wedding probably um because he's very often more seen um in in track suits and and um and kind of kind of informal way um and none of those are unacceptable in um a, a dress code for for a football manager i think it, if if i i could remember um at, at one point um it was way back in the in the early 90s when i was still um, coaching cricket professionally and uh, we had a coaching clinic in in um, in the Black Township, um, Queenie, between Wellington and Paul, and um, one of the coaches actually arrived in in rather sort of formal gear, the jeans and um, and church shoes and and uh, and a nice and a nice um, um, a nice shirt, and you could see that there was an uneasiness amongst the um, the participants, which were all primary school kids. They were like, "Geez, what's this dude about?" It's 43 degrees in the shading Wellington, uh, and this actually no dress appropriately. So very often, yes, um, there's 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 no restrictions and no guidelines, but there is um, occasionally some frowned upon um, behaviors when it comes to what is acceptable and what's not. But um, I think we've we've almost and and it, uh, to bring it back to what um, to last night's interview with Oprah, it was. Um, it was very clear as well, and it is clear that um, for the monarchy and for the royals, there are very specific hard, fast, set behaviors and customs. It's not negotiable. That We don't change it. And I think I'm quite, um, it was quite enlightening to me that they actually took the liberty and they took the opportunity to to break away. Um, and there's always, there will always be in a particular generation, there will be individuals who says, no, I'm not going to conform to this. Um, uh, it's time to change. Or let's consider at least. We don't have to change, but let's consider alternatives. Yes, Cornelius, there's a question here. Again, why are they only joining us now? <laughs> Thanks, Ashley and Lindley, uh, Lindell. Um, right, there we go. So yes, by using those two examples, I, I just want to mean this is something to, to get the conversation going, but um, you don't have a question to ask, mute yourself, please. Otherwise, we hear your dog barking in the background and um, yes. Okay, so um, at this point, there are different ways. Our set of beliefs. Let's let's get back to um, um, that. This might me remind. Uh, it's a um, side note for me. Uh, I haven't uploaded that video that you couldn't see last week. Um, but in essence, that video is about the following. What's the difference between various beliefs and 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 our attitudes? Because they all they different, but they. The, inter, the, the interlinked 
values are things that we values are things that we um, excuse me yes values are things that we um, that we uh, value that we put a high emphasis on that that's important to us beliefs are things that we think is true okay so for instance um, I can believe that um, I can believe that walking under a ladder is, um, is, 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 is well, some people say it's superstition, but because I believe it, um, it's not necessarily superstitious, or my, I might be a superstitious individual. If I walk under a ladder, something bad can happen to me. It's most likely not going to be the case, but I think that's what I believe. doesn't mean that it has to be scientifically proven for it to be a belief. That's why we have more beliefs than we have values. Our attitude is how our thoughts and our actions, um, or is is when we, our thoughts and our actions that we take, um, combine our beliefs and values. That creates an attitude. Okay, um, so we have to distinct between um, these three aspects. Customs are things that we sort of do almost habitual. It's it's it comes with. Um, over years, it's a, it's a routine activity that is repeated over time. Um, later on in the chapter, when we deal with it in greater detail, we can give you examples. Um, but how do we how do we learn? Because one of the students here at Babel said that um, your 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 values are things that you are taught. Now, to to be to be taught something, you have to learn. Um, what it is and what it is about now there are three distinct ways that we can develop our sets of beliefs and values um i'm, I'm not sure if it still happens nowadays but i mean if we a lot of these um of, of these um cultural lessons have been role played with us when we were little children we're playing house house and there's a dollar house and uh, um there are ones that's obviously more popular than others um we dress up and we um, um, as if we are entertaining people and we, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how you grew up, but um, that was quite popular, <laughs> I think. And like tea parties and things like that. Little miniature cups and stuff like that, yes. I mean, and, and um, it's, it's probably, I'm not sure if it's that much of a custom nowadays anymore because, I mean, you guys grew up with a, with a tablet in one hand and an iPhone in the other, um, where... Um, Two, three decades ago it was slightly slightly different the next you would have lost you, you got a bit you got a bit of both <laughs> you're, the, you're the fortunate ones um, <laughs> oh my word no We, we're, just, we're discussing yeah what what um what everybody grew up with and um yeah some oh, no some of some of the students here in Bell will put it out there in the universe and I actually that's just brought back bad memories I mean I thought I was a red of Barney forever um until somebody mentioned <laughs> but they are yeah we we all grew up in different ways and very often um that is, that's all part of the learning process, how we are exposed to um, the cultures that we are born into. And the three, the three um, structured ways in which, or that, that is clearly identifiable as to how we learn um, is obviously formal. We learn it from our, from our parents, from our parents and our older brothers and sisters. They tell us, oh, hang on, no, this is not on, okay? And, there are different ways in which you are rewarded and punished if you don't do it. Okay, so there's a very formal way, and it's just usually done by our families and family members, um, close family members, um, depending on yeah the family structure. Could be a grandmother, um, it could be a older brother, it could be an uncle, but usually it's it's, it's the parents. Um, there's an informal way of learning, and that is where the learning process happens when you um as you grow up you you copy um somebody of um of importance or a celebrity or your sports hero 
the way they do things. And that's why it's, so it's important that these uh, celebrities realize um, how, how big an influence they could have as role players on, on, um, um, on the next generation or generations. And then there's a more formal, um, uh, it's referred to as a technical learning process. That's where you in an educational environment, uh, either at a college or university or at school, you've got a teacher or you've got a lecturer that uh, teaches you um, certain acceptable behaviors. Those are the three most common ways in which we learn and how our set of beliefs and values are, are learned over a period of time. Anybody here at this point who wants to contribute to believe that um, um, they have something to contribute? Everybody? Sir? Yes. Can you say that basically learning is like a form of imitation? So you see people do things and it sort of starts to get, okay, if I do it too, then, you know, sharp, I am almost learning. Imitation is a form of learning. Learning is not imitation per se, because there's other forms of learning, but imitation is one way of learning. It is a popular way because it's visible to us. We can, um, and you've often heard the expression where people say, oh, well, I know my dad in our household said, don't do what I uh, say, do what I do. Um, and I'll, hopefully the two are exactly the same for you to make a statement like that. But we, um, we uh, if we can use another analogy, uh, if given a book to read and you know that the DVD is available as well, most of us would watch the DVD. My son's busy doing with the school assignment um, about the Holocaust and um, he's chosen, um, jo um, what's his first name, Schindler, uh, from the movie Schindler's List. Um, it was, um, yeah, about the Holocaust and um, he was one of the, he was one of the people who actually, um, he's one of the good guys, so to speak. Um, the fact is, it, although it's a two-hour movie, it's going to probably take me two weeks to read the book. So I'd much rather watch the two-hour movie. Um, but that both of them are forms of learning. It, it, it depends um, on, 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 well, it, it is a personal preference, but um, we do uh, generally learn better by copying, imitating, yes than we do by reading. Um, the reading is almost sort of, okay, it, it sort of backs up what you've already seen visually. Um, but yeah, uh, imitation is one of the most popular forms of learning, although it's not the only one. Um, right, nothing else on learning. We understand what learning is or the learning process of how we learn the different beliefs and values and customs as is passed on. It's, it's, it's like um, very often some people believe, uh, I had the discussion the other day with my one son about um, family names. Um, you know what? Yeah, my older son or my sons would have been fourth generation with the same family names if I didn't break that cycle. That was my choice. I thought, you know what, um, I'm, I'm not going to do that because um, somewhere along the line, you're going to become junior, so-and-so junior. Um, yeah, it is it, exactly. It, it is, it's a very Afrikaans culture. Um, Afri, um, 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 the Afrikaans culture is very much like that where you have to, you have to, um, there was the, it was the, it was the acceptable thing to do to, um, to honor your parents or the grandparents um, by naming your kids. And that's where you end up with combination names that horrify me sometimes. How did you come up with this name? It's not even, yeah, but anyway, um, I, I believe that um, pick a name that you, that you are comfortable with because that particular individual is given that name. He has no choice in the matter. When he starts speaking, I mean, he, it's up to that point, he's, he's heard his name the whole time. He just couldn't reply because he hasn't got speech yet. So when you get to that point um, where you can also talk, it is important because you start developing your own personality. And it, it's, it's not a replica of a replica. Um, you must be an original. And I think that's, that's why 
I'm much in favor when it comes to naming children. Yes. So, um, I would mention a restaurant. Like the from the periodic table. <laughs> maybe that yeah, let's not yeah, let's maybe they, they got to the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> this year maybe had something to do with the whole conception. I don't know. <laughs> Was involved in some way. Uh, we, so we, we're talking in, in, in Tarsia amongst ourselves um, on, on strange names and different names. Um, yeah, and I don't know if Stephen shared with us uh, in the restaurant where um, he's waiting that um, the child was called lithium. I no. Anyway, as I said, sometimes culture. Um, it's the same with Elon Musk's son as well. That weird name. I know um, you can't see it right now, but uh, because I don't have a proper whiteboard here, but a friend of ours um, called the name their daughter Enray. It's no strange name, but how it is spelled? Capital N, capital R, E. Why? Why make it so difficult? Imagine um, how that child at some point um, during uh, her schooling years were probably ridiculed a number of times. Can you spell a name for me? Um, capital N, capital R, small E. How do you pronounce that? I mean, and uh, yeah, uh, we, we can go on for days on, on, in, in this regard. Yes. You need to give yourself like a nickname. Like a lot of the English of people can't, can't say for name, and there's like a singer I like with him, Corey. Mm. And it's like similar to mine. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. I mean, that, that happens, but that makes sense. Yeah. It's, it's almost as if um, it's, uh, it, it, it provides whoever gave you that name uh, a way to associate with you because that's how they picture you. I had a similar experience with, with uh, my name. My name is a very much Afrikaans, J-A-C-O, Yaku. Um, so you can imagine working in London for two years, um, the, the variety of interpretations of that particular, because they, they can understand the spelling. We have, if you spell the name to them or you write it down, they can understand it. But I mean, just the pronunciation. But then in general, the British are quite interesting when it comes to all the different dialects. Um, I, I after six months of working there, I've, I've made a, f a friend with one of them, um, or I had a Scottish friend at that stage who worked with me. And I just said to him, Jamie, please write it to me or ask one of your friends to speak to me. Because when you open your mouth and you talk and you claim that it's English, uh, well, that's got his accent. I've got no idea what to say. Uh, you pick it up later on, but it is, yeah, it is quite um, interesting. And, and that's all a part, a part of. Um, of a culture, language, our languages that we use, our, our, our symbols um, and rituals that's, that's um, common to specific um, cultures um, are all signs of, of a particular um, 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 culture. And language is probably the most important one because how if we do not have um, a shared language um, in a particular culture, it will be very difficult for us to, um, to, to, to communicate properly and, and, and um, uh, I don't think any true communication that can actually happen unless um, we have a common language. And I think <laughs> for many, many years, they've tried to, um, um, to commonalize English as the global language. And you'll be surprised how many people globally don't speak English, um, not even as a third language. So, and so basically, like, like even the, the Afrikaans people in South Africa, they can't understand English. Sometimes they just won't. And that's usually when somebody says to me, I can't, I can't understand what you're saying. I said, can't you understand or don't you want to understand what I'm saying? True. Yes. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's a, I think it's a, pers it's a personal choice. In, in my opinion, it's a, it's a form of respect. 
uh, if we really want to um, move forward um, an inch, not even more than an inch, um, we need to obviously be more aware. We'll, we'll see in the, in the second part of this chapter when we, when we um, after the break, um, getting to subcultures, um, how, yeah, how important it is for us to be exposed to different cultures. How do you know uh, what, what, when, and, and I often had this conversation when I was still involved with, with, um, with, with professional cricket. Um, and somebody at one point said, but this is the way we've always done it. And I said, well, hang on guys, this is 1995. We're a new democracy. Who made who king and decided that the way that the whites have organized cricket and the way the coloreds have um, administered cricket and the way that blacks have managed cricket is the accepted way. If you've only been exposed to one of those ways, um, you cannot say, and, and, and that I think um, in any new democracy, and we're a very young democracy, we're only 25 years into it, 26 years into it, um, it we are still finding our feet. We are still making um, 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 a lot of mistakes, purely because uh, we have not completely accepted the fact that, you know what, for you to really develop as a human being, um, total um, inclusivity is, is required. And that means that you have to open your mind um, and break down the restrictions of what you've seen. You, 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 it doesn't mean that you use, lose your own identity or your ability to choose what you believe is, is correct, but you can't limit yourself by if you've only been exposed to one option because then whatever you choose is what, what you know. Like I said with um, from that interview um, with Oprah last night, um, it, what you what you know is what you know, um, and you can only you can only make your decisions and base your um, perceptions on on what you what you know. If you haven't got all the information, then there's nothing wrong with the perception that you have because you are limited, uh, and therefore you have that particular perception. But language is a very important thing, and, uh, um, and it, it is one of the most important aspects that we have to address to ensure that we um, that we um, become a very um, that we become a true um, South African um, population or um, community. Symbols are also very important, and symbols. I've uh, uh, there's examples there. Um, I've also added one. Um, on the new slides that I'll upload this afternoon, but we all know that that particular symbol that is given um, in that um, in in that image uh, is the AOK symbol, right? This this is this is we know it as okay. Well, that's one way. If you reverse your hands and turn it down like that, um, in some countries in the world, it's actually a very derogatory term. Um, you know what the whole is about. Well, that's basically what you're telling somebody if 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 you if you reverse that same action, we have the um, we have different symbols that we can use. I mean, the, the, that video clip at the bottom that you can watch um, in your own time is is from the Mr. Bean movie where um, um, he was exposed to some finger gesture, which is the middle finger, for the for the first time, and um, he thought, oh my geez, well, what a friendly place. I mean, everybody is just expressing their and they love and enjoy for each other. And from there on, that's, this is the kind of um, finger gesture that he used or hand gesture that he used whenever he wants to be friendly to people. And obviously the reaction was quite the opposite because um, the interpretation of that particular symbol is, is not the way he <laughs> he um, interpreted it. Um, so it is important for us to it is important for us to realize that um, different symbols mean different things. And from a marketing point of view, using a specific term and specific color uh, and it has different interpretations in, in, in different in different um, countries in the world. Finally, before we take our short um, break, um, our Zoom break um, of about a minute, let's finish off with the rituals. Our rituals um, is also very much part of a culture. And as we said earlier, it's a, it's a, sim a symbolic activity that sort of rep um, um, represents a sequence of activities and it's repeated over time. Um, there are many in South Africa. I think amongst the black cultures, there's there's um, there's certain rituals um, um, among boys turning men um, in certain initiation processes, which is a ritual. 
Um, and um, then one I could actually also, that most of us can relate to, is probably the haka that the All Black rugby team does before any match. That's also a ritual that they go through. Um, and it's become a trademark of that particular, of that particular